Hi, we're back at the Swedish Tank Museum, Arsenalen in Strängnäs. And there's always a lot of talk about tanks, um, performance, weight, the gun, the crew members, uh, how much armor protection, etc. But um, not so often talking about how to repair them. And that's a quite big task to take care of damaged vehicles repairing them and bringing them back into the battlefield again. And this is behind me a mobile workshop. And this is something I will show you some details, talk about what we had in Sweden in the army from 1950s until the millennium 2000. This is Sweden around the 1980s and of course you have similarities with other countries that also had mobile workshops uh, but I'm gonna tell you a bit how we did it in Sweden. We had big tents that you could put up anywhere where you decided to build this mobile workshop so you could bring in a whole vehicle inside the tent in order to get out of the rain snow, cold, and repairing at night. It's also important not to show any light. So the tent was also a protection because you needed light to do the repair. So you had the tent and uh, camouflage netting, etc., to protect so that the light from the inside wouldn't be seen from the outside. So you, if you had an aircraft flying over you, should not be able to spot this position where it was. Uh, so there are several reasons to have this tent and to bring the vehicle on the inside. So beside the tent you also had three different trailers for the mobile workshop. Number one, number two and number three. Number one was uh, ordinary tools. This is number two where you have a generator, air compressor, so you can get power out uh, to the to the, to the system and in number three you had a big lathe and uh, some other equipment. So with these three trailers you could do almost anything out in the field and you connected them to the tents so you could use the door to get out to the tent without uh, any light from the above. So uh, depending on, on the terrain you could build a quite comfortable workshop. In order to survive in the cold winter up in the northern part of Sweden we had this equipment. It's a diesel heater with a petrol engine um, to heat up the tent. You could close the tent and you got heated air inside of the tent and uh, it was uh, not that bad situation on the inside, even if it was minus 30 on the outside. So you could have a decent temperature inside the tent and continue to do the repairs. A bit noisy, but it worked and it was fantastic heat on the inside. Every vehicle, all vehicles, they were designed differently. So you could not have same tools and equipment uh, for them all, so you needed to have special tools for each type of vehicle. And this is the APSV used in Sweden. And the engine is placed to the, uh, to the right in the front part of the vehicle. And in order to get it out to repair it, you need to remove a lot of things and then connect this uh, lifting device in the roof of the vehicle. With this you can hook on to the engine and then you pull it out out of the vehicle and you can lower it down onto the ground. And from there you need something else to bring it elsewhere in order to repair it or to replace the engine, a new engine and then lift it back into the vehicle again. This is something that you can uh, mount in a couple of hours, so uh, 
four or five hours, you can do an engine swap. Bit complicated, but uh, not so bad idea with all this special equipment. But you need to have the special equipment with you. If you don't have this, um, these parts, no idea to uh, even begin. So you really need to have the special tools with you. A lot of boxes with spares and special tools. And depending on the vehicle, you could sometimes have maybe 50 of these boxes with spares and perhaps 10, 15 boxes with special tools. So you needed several trucks to carry all of this to be able to move the mobile workshop and then unload, unpack before you could be ready to repair. And you needed all these special tools because it's a quite complicated vehicle to only use uh, normal tools. And you also needed to feed the staff, the guys who were repairing the vehicles with candy, something to drink, coffee of course, loads of coffee to keep you awake during the night. So this is the home for these guys working 24-7 repairing vehicles. Every summer house in Sweden has its outdoor toilet. A small hut where you go and don't do your business because you don't have water inside or the, the, the plumbing for that. So that, that's something from very old and in the military we found this in one of the storage. We found the portable, collapsible toilet with the typical heart in the door, which is very typical for these Swedish toilets. So this is a cardboard box that you put together and there you can disappear and do whatever you like. And then continue back to work again. Um, absolutely amazing. You have everything out in the field for the military, even the portable toilet. We have seen the crane on the inside of, the ta of this vehicle and it's also possible to mount the crane on the outside. You mount it on the driver's hatch with the big pole and the crane that you could use for lifting to the rear and you could also use it for lifting in the front, the sprockets, etc. So this was quite handy to have in order to take care of all these heavy equipment, heavy parts that you needed to replace or to take away for repairs. The steering gear at the front could be lifted out and down to the ground. So uh, quite genius with all these special tools. And this is something about how we in Sweden solved the problems with repair of different vehicles. With tent, trailers, special tools. Today we have uh, containers and everything has developed depending on what kind of vehicle you are repairing. But it, was, it worked and it was uh, quite uh, handy to have all this equipment. If you like our films, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook. And perhaps in the future we could do some repair on one of these vehicles.